All right, here's a new supplement for Dracula's America. This one's called Forbidden Power, and it's again written by Jonathan Haythorn's Waite. Hopefully I said that one right. It is published by Osprey Games. It's softbound, 88 pages, and here's the back of the book, which is kind of going to give you a synopsis of what's in this book. Um, one of the things it's doing is adding two new factions. So you can have kind of Cthulhu people that's trying, trying to bring the old ones in, and they add some spells that kind of make them go insane. And then there's also the Salem Sisterhood, which has to do with the Salem Witches. There's also some interesting uh, stealth rules that you use in some of the scenarios. Um, there's some new powers. There's also a new spell list that only the, the Cthulhu guys can uh, cast. There's some creatures in here, um, including some Cthulhu-based ones. Some new guns, or hired guns, I shouldn't say new guns. New hired guns or some uh, new gear and skills. So let's take a look inside and see what's in this supplement. All right, here's a table of contents. It starts off with an introduction from the author. And then it goes through the setting, which is the history of this area and like how the sisterhood came about and how the Church of Dagon came about. Some new game rules you're going to be fighting possibly in some swamps, so how do you swim? Uh, there's some interesting stealth missions in here, adding in some more Eldritch entities instead of just normal beasties. These have to do with Eldritch and Cthulhu. Some new powers, so there's some not only just arcane powers like the necromancy and voodoo, which is limited to certain factions, there's also this elder magic spells, which uh, I think Cthulhu. And then there's the new factions, Church of Dagon and the Salem Sisterhood, and then the new campaign rules. So if you've been playing the campaign through the hunting grounds, you can continue it here, or if you just want to start here, you can. So it's going to bring in some new hired guns, new gear. There is some relics and cursed weapons, and then the encounters that could happen, and the scenarios, and there's seven of them. And then what happens if the Alliance of Order wins or the Alliance of Chaos wins. All right, this is the setting, and this goes through how, like, the Sisterhood came about. It goes in depth with them, and also how the Church of Dagon came about with the Elder Unities. There's also, <laughs> it's kind of interesting, there's also a part about uh, Benedict Arnold in this, and Betsy Ross, and stuff like this. It's a very, actually a very interesting read, so if you get a chance to read this section. There's also a part in this that goes more into the Deep South, and about the Dark Confederacy and what they're doing, and also it's going to be, the congregation will be involved in this also. So it goes more in depth in those, with those four factions, the Salem Sisterhood, the Church of Dagon, the uh, Dark Confederacy, and not so much, but that'll be a little bit later with the congregation. All right, so what are some new game rules? One of them is the area you can fight in is the Swampland. And then it could have a deep water in it, which means you have to swim. And it's, it's going to be a test there to see if you swim or not. If you're wearing boilerplate, for example, it may be a little tougher. And also, uh, models that go down while in deep water have a chance of drowning and taken out of a game. Um, they do talk about aquatic models. Uh, aquatic creatures or the Cthulhu guys, I think, can add some aquatic effects. And that makes them where they like the deep water and they're pretty comfortable in there. You can also add treacherous conditions to the game. It's going to be a basically a D6 roll for the event that's going to happen with that. So it has those events for the Swamp Land, but the actual event events that could happen, you know, if you match card and suit, you can do these events if you're in a Swamp Land. So um, some pretty nasty things could happen in the Swamp. And in the next part, of course, you're going to have what are some of the creatures that can be in the swamp? And here's a list of them. And for example, the bloat fly here, when it dies, it explodes with acid. Or the deep folk or um, human, humanoid fish creatures that are uh, in this game. So they've added these uh, creatures for swamp encounters. Stealth mission. Now this is kind of interesting. There's four of them in here, and it's kind of like a little twist on the normal game. One side's the attacker, and one side's the defender. Defender gets all their models. The attacker only gets half. So if you're playing like a 
14 model game, the defender would get 14 models and the attacker would only get seven. Kind of give you an example. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're at a disadvantage. The attacker only, or the defender, sorry, the defender who has all those miniatures only gets to deploy half their models on the table. The rest are put into reinforcements. And the attacker is basically trying to sneak on to the, or sneak around in the mission, and the defender models have to do spotting tests. But there's also a twist to that. They're just on watch. They're guards doing their sentry duty. And so when the defender wants to activate one of his models, the attacker and him roll off. Whoever wins gets to control that model. So if the attacker wins, he gets to control that model. Now, there are limitations. They can only move or look out. They can't kill. They can't harm each, you know, they can't like fall off. You can't have them like fall off a roof. They can't shoot themselves. And so basically all they do is move and look out. The attacker who's trying to infiltrate in is trying to maneuver those models away to where they can't see his limited force coming in. But if they are ever spotted, then the, the alarm's going to be sounded and then the defender's reinforcements can come into the game. Now if you look here, here's the first scenario, Bas basic one, it's a assassinate. And so you can see the rules here, I'm not going to go through them all and what you can do in this mission. But remember, Defender only starts with half their models on the table. Um, he may, may not get to control them until the attacker is spotted. Alright, Eldritch Terrors. Um, this has to do with adding some new elements to games such as Madness, Insanity, and some creatures. Some, so there's another beast here in here besides just the swamp creatures. Now Madness, if you're going to play with Madness in the game, there's going to be a new phase added called the Madness phase. And this happens between the draw phase and the action phase. Now there's this uh, Madness pool that can be from 0 to 10. 10 is the max they can go to and 0 of course is the lowest they can go to. So you're going to roll on this phase, roll a d10. If it's higher than the amount in the madness pool, you're going to add that much more to it. So if the madness pool is at 5 and you roll an 8, well, it's 3 more than what's needed. So you're going to add 3 to the uh, madness pool. Now, again, it can only go up to 10. If you roll equal to or under, then some something's going to happen. Maybe all players have to discard their hand and redraw. Or the, the noun tokens in the madness pool drop. There's also an insanity table which can come into play through spells and other effects. And then there's the beastie area which you can see here, some of those. So there's eight of them that have to do with these eldritch, their eldritch entities. And so if you look here, here's uh, some of them and what they can do. Alright, here are some new spells. The first group of spells is for the elder magic spells. An arc Canist or Arcanist can cast these if they have the Elder, Eldritch Tome. Also, um, those the Church of Dagon can cast these automatically. Now, there is a few things that's kind of different about these spells. The first is you have to look at the Madness Pool. So if you look at the Elder sign here, it says Madness 2. So your Madness Pool must have at least two or more tokens in it. If it's 0 or 1, you can't cast that spell. So that's the first requirement. And of course it got the normal difficulty, like difficulty 2, and that's the normal for like any other spell in the game. Now, if you fail, just fail to cast a spell, you have to succeed on a sanity test. If you fail, you're going to roll on that, on that insanity table. Now, if it was miscast also, you have to do the missed cast first to see if something happens there. Then you roll on the insanity table if you don't make the uh, sanity test. So, there are some neat spells here, but they do have their limitations with that madness pool and also with the insanity added in. Alright, these are the necromantic arcane powers, and these are for Dark Confederacy faction only. And so it's going to have three new spells. There's nothing new as far as how you cast these spells, so nothing new there. But, if you get to the voodoo, or however you say, I just want to say voodoo, arcane powers, which are for the congregation only, 
they do have something kind of new in this, and that's sacrificing Loa, L-O-A. If you sacrifice this and you successfully cast a spell, it makes the spell more powerful. So if you look at here like this Breath of Loco, and it says Offering Heart, that means if you discard from your hand a card with hearts on it, and you successfully cast the spell, not only do you get the spell off, but you get this boon, which makes the spell more powerful. All right, so now we're into the new factions in this game. There's two of them. The first one is the Church of Dagon, which is the Cthulhu. They're trying to bring the old ones back into the world. One of the things is you're, you'll have a priest of Dagon, which is going to be your leader of your faction, and they can cast every Eldritch spell. So they know all those um, Elder magic spells, all six of them. However, uh, they can't cast normal arcane powers. Now also what you get is what's called hybrids. And so you could choose two non-hired guns as hybrids and they get some random mutation, such as slimy skin or they can grow tentacles. So yeah, so you can get those. That's the kind of things you get for having the Church of Dagon. The Salem Sisterhood. This one's a little different in that normally you pick one character and that's or one miniature or whatever and that's your leader. This one has three. You have a maiden, a mother, and a crone. And these three basically want to stay near each other because they give benefits to each other by staying near each other. Also what you're going to do is pick a non-hired gun as the guardian. And this guy is there to protect these three witches. Alright, we have some new campaign rules. One of the first ones is new hired guns. And most of these can be hired by any faction. Some of them are based on these Eldritch things such as Eldritch Investigator or Emissary, Emissary of Dagon. But there's also such things as a Hog Tamer which uh, not only do you get the guy, you get a dire hog with him. So you get two out of that one. And you can also get such things as a guard dog. All right, here's the list of new gear. Um, there's a couple of interesting things in here is the familiar is one. And what this allows the caster to be able to do, an arcanist, arcanist to be able to do is when they cast a spell, they can once per game remove, it doesn't become a casualty, it just remove the familiar and then that allows them to re-roll all those dice. Now they have to re-roll all of them, not pick them. So it allows, ooh, there's a miscast, uh, let me get my familiar to allow me to re-roll this. Another one is Lantern, which can be used for like those stealth missions to allow it to, you, where you could try to spot the bad guys. I'm going to say bad guys in quotes, bad guys coming in, it makes it easier to spot them at night. All right, there is a new skill list, and this is the arcane skills. So if you got an ar arcanist or arcanist, you can choose this skill list to roll instead of like the leadership or uh, shooting skills. All right, not only could you hire uh, like the doctor or the preacher and stuff like that, you can hire some guns. There's also these unique mercenary drifters. And the word unique there means there can only be one on the table of these specific characters. So if two posses want the same uh, mercenary drifter, there's a way to see who could actually try to hire the mercenary drifter. Um, another special rules with them is you hire them and they're used in the next game. After that game, they leave your posse. Now one of them could be like the hangman and basically he selects a specific model of the opponent's force and if he gets into a fight with them, and he wins by so much that model is taken out as a casualty. Another one is Dr. Henry Victor Weston Adam. The doctor, Henry Victor, is basically a stitch doctor, but he comes with Adam. And Adam, I would look at as think of Frankenstein with a pistol. That's the way to really look at him. So you can hire those two guys. And there's a couple of others of these special, unique mercenaries. All right, they've added in Eldrick relics and cursed weapons into the game and you can look here and see how those can come about. Now Eldritch relics, there's six of them you can see on the list here. 
some are once per game, some you can, as long as the condition's there, you can use it over and over and over again throughout the game. So like the black scroll here, uh, depending upon which spell you roll, you can once per game cast that spell, no, no casting roll or it doesn't matter how many tokens are in the madness pool, you can cast that spell. All right, cursed weapons. Uh, these are actually pretty interesting. Um, you can only have one cursed weapon, that, and that character will not ever sell that weapon. They'll always hold on to it. Um, their infamy will go up, and if they jam, there's a chance they hurt themselves, because the weapon's like, hey, what are you doing? But um, you don't know what actually what the weapon is until you roll on this table. It could be a sword, a bow, it could be a rifle, and it's just a normal weapon until the first time you use it. And when the first time you use it, you're going to roll on this chart here. Now, don't roll a 1. Then that character is gone. However, if it's a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, it's actually kind of a boon with that weapon that could have some really big detrimental effects on who is hit by it. All right, if you're playing in Deep South with these uh, scenarios or in a campaign here, there's some different encounters you can have. It's two of a kind, three of a kind, and four of a kind. However, if you roll five of a kind, you're going to have an Eldritch encounter. Hit tentacles. All right, here we are at the narrative campaign section, and this is going to be very familiar to you if you've done or read the narrative campaign in the hunting grounds. You have to still have the Alliance of Order and Alliance of Chaos, and they're going to keep track of those destiny points to see which side wins. There are seven scenarios in this game. You can see the list here. And I'm going to show the first one, which is Swamp Ambush. Now, I'm not going to describe it. I'm just going to leave it up here. If you need to read it longer, you can pause the video. So there is Swamp Ambush. And after you've gone through these seven scenarios and you see which side wins, there's the campaign af aftermath, which is what is the Alliance of Order 1 or the Alliance of Chaos when they go through what happens there. Now, I have not read that because I don't want to be, um, I want to be surprised because I'm actually going through the campaign right now. On the hunting grounds, we're going to head to the Forbidden Power one, so I don't want to read ahead and see what happens. So, there we go with that. All right, well, that is Forbidden Power. From what I get from the author, this is going to be the last supplement for Dracula's America. I'm not sure, but kind of what I'm reading here between the lines of what he talked about in the introduction. And in a way, that kind of makes me sad because I think the supplements, there's only been two, but I think they've gotten better. I really do like this supplement. This Church of Dagon thing, it just looks like it'd be, I don't want to say insane or crazy, but that's what it sounds like. It just seems like it'd be crazy to play. It just seems like it'd be a blast to play that you guys possibly go insane, you guys got these mutations, and you can mutate the opponents or your own people, you can mutate your own poxy with these spells. So that is very interesting. The Salem Sisterhood acts totally different from what I've seen reading about them from the other ones. The stealth missions, that is a nice twist on the normal game. The new hired guns are interesting, and in these drifters, I mean, they're one-shots, but they're, they're pretty nice little... Uh, Hired hands, or hired guns, I guess you'd say. And adding in the new Eldritch spells with this madness pool needed to be able to cast the spell. And if you miscast, there's an insanity. Or if you don't even cast it, there's an insanity situation, possibly. Which kind of adds the fun, I think, to that posse. And if you're not into that, well, then that, definitely that posse is not for you. But it adds, it adds that possibility of that choice of a posse for those that find that interesting. And then the campaign, continuing the campaign, I just wish it would continue on beyond this book. But I am really, really looking forward to when we're done with the Hunting Grounds campaign, heading directly into Forbidden Power, and I see myself heading to the Church of Dagon and playing the campaign with them in this one. So yeah, if you like Dracula's America and want to see some more expansion to the game, definitely get forbidden power.